Morning all. Did I hear clapping? <laughs> I think clapping is COVID secure, don't you? As long as you clap. As long as you clap with sanitized hands. <laughs> uh, anyway, a very, very warm welcome to you all. If you weren't uh, if you weren't here last week, uh, I announced at the very beginning of the service that now, when you come to receive your bread, there's also a tiny bit of wine on the wafer as well. Uh, to reassure you, it won't be soggy, okay? I put it on last night, and it's now dry. So there we are, some form of normality. And another form of normality was that yesterday, we had a wedding! Oh my goodness, it was great. And we've got another wedding coming up, and so it's my joy and delight to publish the bands of marriage between Jonathan Victor Baranowski, single person of the parish of Seacroft in Leeds, and Alison Jane Speed, also single person of the same parish, but qualified to be married in this parish. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. And this is for the second time of asking. Ah. And so, everything you need is in the blue leaflet in front of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart he will not despise. Lord, we have sinned against you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord show us your mercy and love. Christ, have mercy. Lord, grant us your salvation. Lord, have mercy. The Lord, have mercy on you deliver you from your sins and shelter you in all temptation. The Lord make his face shine upon you and save you in his unfailing love. Amen. Amen. Lord of creation, whose glory is around and within us, open our eyes to your wonders that we may serve you with reverence and know your peace at our life's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The New Testament reading is taken from the Epistle of St. James, chapter 3. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, 
There you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. We stand for the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Mark. They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet, because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. And he took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord our God and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Jesus, we are told, was travelling through Galilee. It was one of those turning points in his life when he had to make a decision. His ministry in Galilee was it something about two years and at this particular point he'd been as far north out of Galilee into the area of Tyre and Sidon that we now call Lebanon. And so he decided that he had to go to Jerusalem because that's where everything would come together. That's where it would all finish and all begin. And he wanted to use that journey to teach his disciples, we are told. And so he didn't want anybody to know where they were. Because wherever he went normally, there'd be great crowds of people coming to him for teaching, for healing. And so he wanted just him twelve and himself. And even that was very difficult to be because when there were no great crowds, There was always the odd one or two people coming 
at different times. And Jesus never turned anybody away. So he's teaching them. Why? Well, because they're going to meet what they haven't met a lot of up to now when they get to Judea and Jerusalem. They're closer to the temple, the temple authorities. The scribes and Pharisees are likely to be more active in their opposition. And so they needed preparing the disciples. They needed preparing for the ultimate of that visit to Jerusalem, the crucifixion. And so the first thing we're told in the gospel that he says is, the Son of Man will be betrayed to the hands of men, he'll be killed and rise again on the third day. That's it. Nothing said, no questions asked, nothing. Why? We're not sure. It could be that they remembered when Jesus said this once before, that Peter had taken him on one side and said, this won't happen to you. And he turned on Peter and uh, rather abused him in words. Get behind me, Satan. Because Jesus didn't want anything that would weaken his determination to go through with what was inevitable, what had been ordained. So what teaching was there in just that statement that he would be betrayed, he would be killed, and he would rise again? Now the other part of the gospel today is fairly easy for us to understand, isn't it? What are we arguing about on the road when we're coming here? And again, there was silence because they knew they'd been arguing about who was going to be the greatest, who was top dog, leader of the pack. You see, all the way through Galilee, they'd been basking in the fame and the popularity of Jesus wherever he went with his healing and his teaching. They were like to be known that the twelve who had been there with him from the beginning. So it was a surprise to find that Jesus knew what they were thinking, what they were saying. Who is the greatest? Who is the greatest? When all the time Jesus had been preaching about forgiveness, about sharing, about caring, and here they are arguing about being the greatest. Jesus said to them, if you want to be the greatest, you've got to be the servant of all the rest. First will be last, and the last will be first. In other words, there's no first and last with God. God loves everyone. Status doesn't come into it. So that teaching is easy to understand. But if we get back to his statement about betrayal and killing and rising again, what was that teaching? What was he aiming for? Well, that, coupled with the rest of his teaching on the way to uh, Judea, I presume, was trying to strengthen their faith Because he knew that there would come a time when their faith would get a terrible shock. It would be put to the test when he was crucified. And we know that they were at a loss, weren't they? They didn't know what to do, where to hide. They were like that for three days. And the only time the break came through was when Mary came running back from the tomb, I've seen the Lord. Then, the faith that had been hidden started to resurface. And then finally, 
at Pentecost. It burst forth like a flower in the sun. So Jesus wanted to strengthen their faith against great shocks. And how does that apply to us? Don't we need that same strength when we get shocks that would rock our faith? When the sunshine that is God's presence is clouded over as though a dark cloud had passed over. And our faith gets a shock. We need something to help us to get through it. It may already have happened to you, maybe more than once. I can think of twice in my own life when it happened to me. And at one point, God seemed far away. We need our faith to be strong enough to withstand shocks. And also what helped with me was the fact that the church was always here for me. And that is a great part of our faith. That we have faith enough in Christ and in the church to help us through the black times when the clouds cover the sun and the shocks have come. With regard to humility, and that's what Jesus was talking about when he spoke about the greatest, the first and the last, I'd like to read for you Psalm 131. It's a very short psalm, but I think it hits the nail on the head. O oh Lord, my heart is not proud. My eyes are not raised in haughty looks. I do not occupy myself in great matters. Such things are too high for me. But I have quieted and stilled my soul. Like a winged child on its mother's breast, so my soul is quieted within me. O Israel, trust in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. And finally, with regard to faith and trust, some words from the end of that reading from St. James's Epistle. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Amen. Let us pray. Through the gospel, the Lord Jesus calls us to share in his glory. Let us make our prayer with him to our Heavenly Father. <coughs> we pray for all nations, especially Afghanistan, that they may seek the way that leads to peace, that human rights and freedom may be everywhere respected and that the world's resources may be generously shared. Place your ambassadors, Lord, into places where they can influence and engender these kingdom values. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for the church, especially this fellowship of all saints, that her leaders and members may be strong in faith and hope, and that you may be recognised in the love she bears to all. Lord, in your mercy. 
We pray for our families and this community of Thelwall in which we live, that we may find you in them and in our celebrations and sadnesses. Bless the marriages of Bradley and Molly that took place on Saturday, plus Alison and John on the 9th of October. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for ourselves that in the coming week we may serve others in our voluntary and vocational work and find peace when we rest. Lord, in your mercy. We remember the faithful departed, especially Dennis Harrop and Margaret Arnold, that through your mercy they may rest in peace. Lord, in your mercy. And we say together, merciful Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father God, it is right to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we give you thanks because through him we are saved forever and baptised into your service. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. 
So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord says, I am the vine and you are the branches. May we dwell in him as he lives in us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love is the fulfilling of the law. Grant that we may love you with our whole heart and our neighbours as ourselves, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. 
May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessings upon all things created and upon you, his children, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.